Well, thank you for having me. And you know, what I'm going to do today is present and connect the dots of 25 years of work, which says I need to speak a little bit about the public companies, but also now the privately held companies. So this is the first conference, actually, that we've now decided in, over the course of the next year um, revealing what NANT is all about. And we talk about delivering the fourth industrial revolution. And there was really a, initially a single focus to un understand the biology of cancer, which is incredibly complex, which required us to create infrastructure to move photons, to move electrons, to move bits, to create synapses into what we call augment intelligence and generate even our own energy so that we could treat disease and hopefully change lives. So today, what I'm going to share with you is the culmination of a pursuit that has taken us down the path uh, from engineering, biology, medicine, technology, and converging them. And this is indeed the fourth industrial revolution. So we took on the task of this impossible task of taking a human tumor and a normal sample from the same patient using it as a control and taking 3 billion base pairs, 300,000 RNA, 10,000 10, protein pathways to find that one single sequence, that little gold sequence in there, that is unique to every single patient with cancer. I don't think the world realizes that you are, your cancer is your genome, and your genome is not unlike any other genome, so therefore cancer is actually a rare disease. So when I hear in the previous talk that 52% of S&P companies have changed in terms of their market cap, I saw in my mind um, the need to transform pharmaceuticals, healthcare delivery, and converge for the first time technology. Because in order for us to evolve this uh, um, solution, we needed to create a supercomputing network that will take artificial intelligence, machine learning, machine vision, um, connectivity, fiber connectivity, layer one, connectivity, layer two, connectivity, and you'll hear tomorrow from Packet Fabric, to create an engine that will evolve for us this um, holy grail of new epitopes. If, in fact, we could do that, we needed to find a vector and a vector already existed in the form of gene therapy, this thing called the adenovirus, a common cold virus. And one then could ev evolve that and grow that and then implement this as the next generation uh, cancer vaccine. This was the single focus of our work that we've privately done. Um, we have a 25-acre campus um, in uh, Culver City, plus another 20 plus acre campus in El Segundo that we've quietly built truly what I believe the Bell Labs of healthcare with physicians, mathematicians, biologists, uh, nanophotonics, and technologies that was necessary to solve this problem. And out of that became NANT. So today uh, we're revealing who we are and the first entity that some of you know us as is NANT Healthcare. But NANT Healthcare is not just healthcare, it's really what we call the precision healthcare of the future, in which we'll have not only the delivery system of the future with precision diagnostics, and you also have seen the Chan Soon Chung Institutes for Molecular Medicine and the Verity Health System. The digital communication system of the future, which will allow live streaming and layer one, layer two, fiber connectivity with predictive artificial intelligence of the future. And the biotechnology company of the future in which your body, your body is the biological factory for N equals one. These things, these three little things uh, represent multiple companies, these bullets. And we will start by revealing this NANT Healthcare as an uh, organization. But in order to do this, you needed to build an artificial intelligence program, and not many people um, have recognized that I was a part of my work as UCLA uh, as a surgeon. I was also a NASA scientist, and I was part of the STS-90 space shuttle, and uh, during that time, the Mars rover program, 
and the Large Hadron Collider and the National Lambda Rail, all of those programs I was personally involved with, so that we could create from that point to this point this whole concept of machine learning, neural networks, machine vision, natural language processing, and what I call augmented reasoning um, at the point of action. But in order to move the amounts of data uh, we're talking about, enormous amounts of data, we now move petabytes of data a week, but we need to actually move a gigabyte, a terabyte, um, and turn it on and turn it off, and no such infrastructure exists. And tomorrow, again, you will hear Packet Fabric talking about that, so we can create the digital communications of the future, what I call connectivity on demand, capacity on demand, and layer one, layer two, cybersecurity. And we've built that as NANCOM. These data centers require energy. Um, so we've built backups, both our manufacturing plants, our hospitals, data centers, critical energy. And we've now invested in what we call the energy breathing cell of the future for energy and demand and storage and demand and off-grid power at what I call layer zero. And we are now uh, managing four million people on this planet off the grid, completely off the grid. This net energy then is supplemented now, and some of you may have heard about a little paper called the LA Times, um, the digital media of the future. We're both publishing and augmented reality and the whole world of new media, studios, sports and entertainment can take advantage of this infrastructure that was built to find the cures for cancer. So this is NANT. And obviously, uh, we have, uh, not just in Los Angeles, um, what may surprise people, we are actually global and have over 8,000 employees um, around the world, um, all working towards this goal um, of finding this cure. Um, we also have this global private fiber interconnectivity map, and you will hear more of this tomorrow, as I said, through Packet Fabric. And the idea was to deliver this fourth industrial revolution, but truly taking computing to the edge. So if you took computing to the edge and had a connectivity that you can turn on and off at terabytes per second to the cloud, and then bring it to cognition at point of care, and this is, was the goal of NANT, and we would use this at least in the world of healthcare. And so we, our goal is to build what we call the hospital of the future with 5G, and actually create what we have now built as Da Vinci engine, which is this machine learning, machine vision, artificial intelligence program at the edge so that we can give 21st century care and genomic sequencing at the edge and, and drive molecular-based medicine and coordination of care and build the biological uh, farm of the future and then drive energy to uh, critical sources and bring, therefore, um, this edge computing. If you took all this edge computing and really built it into the cloud, there needs to be a there there. So we needed to build layer one and layer two connectivity. Um, and we now have um, interconnected 300 imaging centers. Uh, we are connected throughout the country with regard to uh, fiber network. And we have created this layer zero um, um, breathing cell so that we could deploy a cognition platform. And this co cognition platform we will now want to make available uh, will be the first cognition platform could be available as an API so that you can tie into the services platform and then drive um, external inputs so that you can have cognition at the edge in which uh, one could then have both knowledge, delivery, um, and care. But this is obviously applicable to anything and everything. So let me explain to you now in the last 11 minutes I've got left here, um, 25 years of work. <laughs> um, so, the idea being, we have this amazing challenge. How do we, if in fact it is true, that every one of you have a sequence that is completely unique to yourself? And that sequence, when it goes awry, is the sequence that's driving the cancer. And if we could identify that sequence and re-educate your immune system, because your immune system has been put to sleep with what I call the first responder, and I'll share that with you today. The first responder of your immune system is the thing called the natural killer cell. It is not the T cell. 
So all this work on CAR T and checkpoints is fantastic, but it's not the first responder. So we need to capture the first responder, but we need to cross this chasm of N equals 1 to the human population. And we also need to completely transform biotechnology and healthcare, which means you cannot bankrupt a cancer patient and their family once they have cancer. And so we need to figure out a way to drive molecular-based 21st century care. And at the same time, we need to unravel this enormous problem of, I'll share with you, this new epitope. And the only way we could do this is through this concept of augmented intelligence. And that's why for literally since the um, last 10 to 12 years, we've been working diligently on machine vision, machine learning, um, so that we can actually find and deliver the right care, the right time, right place, and evidence-based. But we need to re-educate the oncologists in this country, because they're now immunologists, and we need to re-educate the payers to pay for value-based care. We need to coordinate the care. We need to have what we call advanced clinical decision support. We need to create value-based care. And most importantly, we need to solve this new epitope for all and every patient. That N equals one problem is what I call the hospital and delivery care of the future. That's just one element, and some of you know that is NAND Health. But then we need to go build this supercomputing network. And we'll share with you, we have six computer years, thousands of predictive tra uh, trained models, supervised and unsupervised learning, um, so we can get a predictive modeling set. And if you create that and create this digital communications, predictive AI of the future, you then have the opportunity now to go and create molecular-based precision medicine and pharma of the future and create what I call precision medicine biotech of the future. So that was the strategy. And let me share with you very quickly the healthcare and each of these um, first. So the digital communications of the future, as I said, and the AI, we currently host 31,000 fully trained outcome predictors with six computer years, and we've now created 21 million outcomes that's been analyzed with 40 petabytes of genomic storage, huge, uh, huge amounts of um, delivery and delivery capacity. With regard to the precision of the future, this is a cartoon, but it's actually reality now. And this is what's going to change pharma that you quite literally will be able to print the drug, which means every human patient is actually a drug discovery vehicle to themselves. Just think about that. Every human patient is a drug discovery vehicle to themselves. Based on the sequence, and this cancer new epitope, which is this peptide, this nine amino acids to 15, 12 amino acids, tied to what they call the T-cell receptor, the TCR, tied to this thing called MHC, I'm not getting into the science, which is basically your blood type way to think about it. To actually solve this problem, you need to take three billion base pairs, this down from the DNA down to the RNA, down to solving this problem. And we've solved this problem now so that we can now drive this into this and then bring what I call nature's first responder. Nature's first responder is this natural killer cell hunting that cancer cell and killing it. And this is that nature's first responder. And we've now grown this off the shelf in an unlimited supply, which means then we can now target this with a sequence. And here then we can take this nature's first responder and add what we call high affinity CD16 and take Herceptin and you just add Herceptin. This becomes the CAR T. You don't need to create a CAR-T. You've just created nature's first responder that'll explode this breast cancer cell and bring along the T-cell. If you add then, and here it is, a single blood transfusion, which is grown off the shelf. But that's no good if you can't target it, and here we can, using this adenovirus, and create, activate the dendritic and T-cell and generate memory. And what I'm pleased to announce is we now have 25 authorizations from the INDs to initiate phase one, two trials in every tumor type. We now have 50 trials in clintrials.gov. We've completed five first in humans in 2017. We're planning another seven first in humans in 2018. 
And most importantly, in 2018, we will have 16 planned phase two and phase three trials. So this is our goal in, in which we're going after unmet needs, triple negative breast cancer, bladder cancer, patients with uh, chordoma, and I'm going to the Chordoma Foundation for which there's no treatment, uh, um, pancreatic cancer, but not just pancreatic cancer, pancreatic cancer that's failed all treatments. And these patients have two and a half months left to live. And so I'll give you some examples. This is our first patient receiving this human non-pancreatic cancer vaccine at our institute here in El Segundo in August 2017, has now received nine cycles. This thing called the CA99, this is a patient with third line. And all these patients have an average median survival of two and a half months. Now has gained 12 pounds, the CA99 is no normal, his CAT scan showed a 20% reduction, and he's stable, and it's now March 2018, and he's now six months. Patient number two, same, and the CA19 now is approaching normal. This patient was in a fetal position with so much pain, uh, with methadone twice a day. Very, very, after the first or second cycle, pain-free, she's completely pain-free, gained 12 pounds. CA99, almost normal, now almost six months. Patient number three, similar story, and now six months. So I'm excited to say that the future is actually here, uh, the opportunity for us to take this uh, whole world of augmented intelligence and truly enter ra r rapidly. We are actually implementing the fourth industrial revolution, where on the left-hand side you see we're converting biology, uh, technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, manufacturing, and state-of-the-art manufacturing, so that we will tr truly change, we believe, the course of cancer. So thank you very much. Uh, that's what that's what I'm going to do.